Well, ingredients wise, beer is quite simple. All you really need is water, malted barley, hops, and yeast. Um, that's all you really need to do to make great beer. So yeah, the four ingredients, hops, malted barley, yeast, and water. It starts with the ale yeast and the lager yeast. There's only two types of yeast. And that's, ales are generally more robust, or uh, I'd say they're more robust, more flavorful. And lagers are generally more, we call them sessionable, drinkable. Uh, but you can really you know, manipulate either styles to do whatever you want these days. Uh, but basically what you do is you take your malted barley and you extract all the sugars out of it um, in this thing called a mash. This is a mash paddle. It's a small version. Uh, during the mash, most of the enzymes in the barley go to work, breaking down all the long polymers of starch into smaller um, sugars that can actually be fermented. Once you finish the boiling, you extract all the sugars from the grain, and you got wort, which is basically a, a barley type of tea. Yeah, you take that wort and you put it into the fermentation tanks. And the fermentation tanks, the, depending upon what kind of beer you're making, whether it's an ale lager, it will be cold or warm. Lagers are fermented at cold temperatures, ale is fermented at warmer temperatures. So then you'll inoculate the wort with yeast, depending upon what kind of beer you're making. You'll use ale yeast or lager yeast, and there's different yeast within those categories as well. Um, once you have your wort, you put it into the process called the boil. Um, the boil is basically uh, where you add your hops, and the hops basically contribute flavor, aroma, and that bitterness that's custom to most of the beers that we're familiar with today. And then you'll start the yeast will start eating the sugars, and creating alcohol and CO2. And from there. You're going to finish your beer um, after the fermentation process has happened. You'll start lagering your beer. So we'll show you the laundry room next, which will be in a cold cellar room, and that's where the beer will finish up. We'll finish its carbonation process, and it'll start to settle. So lagers can be what's called like a bottom fermenting beer. It'll take a little bit longer to brew. They're only done like cold or something like that. So like back, in the, back in the olden days, they have um, they found that when they took their beer and put it in like caves, like ice caves and stuff like that, by the end of the winter time, it had stored and ended up like continuing the fermentation process, and it ended up being like a clear, like more cleaner beer. This is just a modern version of like a cellar. It's just a full box where we keep it at um, about 40 degrees or so, sometimes a little cooler. And it's where all of our beer finishes. So it finishes its carbonation in here. And here. Uh, it's pretty much done for many at the time, and there's just still a little bit of slow fermentation process happening. And then if it doesn't have enough carbonation, we just enter a secondary uh, fermentation process with adding more wort into the beer, yeast will activate again and start eating more sugars. Or we can uh, force carbonate by injecting CO2 into the tanks, and then the beer will absorb the CO2 over time. Uh, yeah, uh, so my first batch, uh, it was an extract kit. Uh, I didn't go from an all grain approach. But after I was done with it, uh, I stuck it in the fermenter or the carboy as we like to refer to it. And over I think three days, I saw the yeast going to work. They were eating up all the sugars, making the beer. But what I didn't realize was that I overfilled my carboy and one morning I woke up and all my beer had exploded all over my kitchen and regardless to say my mom was pretty pissed off at me. <laughs> if you're looking for a really interesting beer, uh, you can stray away from the standard pitching of your yeast and go into what's called a wild fermentation. 
there are now more and more trends that are happening and becoming popular um, where you are injecting bacteria or whatnot into your beer and you're getting souring components, things of that nature. And it's been done for a long time, which is you now people are looking for different varieties of beer. So sour beer has become more popular. We got a couple of barrels of uh, beer, wine barrels, whiskey barrels that have kind of uh, taken on bacteria from the barrel or wild yeast and have a little bit of a sour component to them. Where wild yeast that basically is present in the brewery naturally inoculates uh, your beer and it ferments that way. These kind of beers give pretty fruity notes. Uh, people actually refer to natural yeast strains such as Brotanomyces of giving a band aid -y or a horse blanket flavor that uh, actually some wines uh, have in them. Creek beers, uh, Flemish uh, red beers, there's, there's a lot of different styles of beer that have a souring component to it. Yeah. And that's what it comes from. It comes from bacteria being put into the brewing process at different times and creates a sour component. And there's even other re other beers that develop in the same manner as accidents. Like, you make a Doppelbock for the winter time, which is a beer that came about due to the German monks. They were brewing a beer that was a little more robust, had some more grain in it, so they figured that a, a more robust beer they could sustain themselves off of during fasting. So during the Lent season or during the uh, Advent season or Christmas and stuff, they wouldn't eat, so they would consume beer instead. And so they would brew a stronger beer with more grain and stuff, supposedly more nutrition. And then they added to these Dahlbach beers and or just Bach beers that came out over the holiday seasons. And also in the, in the springtime, they do the same for the Lent season. So uh, that transition to uh, a bartender, I think, to having a beer in the back uh, during wintertime and the beer froze and all that was left over was um, all the alcohol that was left and that got poured off because he had no more beer to pour for his patrons and it turned into an ice block. So now you see a style called an ice block which just came because of an accident of you know, some you know, person putting their keg outside or their barrel of beer outside, needing beer, but it was frozen, all that was left over was you know, the beer that had the most alcohol in it. Yeah. So that's a, another style that came out of kind of accidentally. So people, you know, sometimes mistakes turn into uh, you know, or traditions that turn into new styles of beer. Uh, really it is. If you go from an extract approach, it's really as simple as boiling a pot of water, adding a little bit of sugar to it. Uh, not a little bit of sugar, sorry. I should clarify. A lot of sugar. And uh, basically adding hops after that. And then throwing it into a fermenter, letting it sit for a while and uh, become beer. You know, I definitely might just need something to boil, you know, some water on for it gets the right temperatures and transfer it in, you know, to another um, uh, container to ferment it in and keep it at a steady temperature. So um, definitely it's quite easy to make beer. Um, you know, get the beer how you want it to taste and have it taste like that, you know, every time you make it. That's the tricky part. But, you know, just to uh, make a beer is, you know, not too complicated. And makes the finished product that we all love.